Hello viewers and a warm welcome to the show today. As you can see, I have the grace of introducing Fortune, who's going to be the guest on the show today. I'll also speak a little bit on what Fortune does. Now, Fortune is an actress, a very, very good upcoming talent here in Nairobi. And being that she's also a nice, beautiful foodie from home, she's also going to be gracing our presence and learning some beautiful tips and tricks around making the very simplest of dishes, especially for those of you who are looking at convenience and healthy options for your dinner. Now, maybe you can give us a little bit of feel of uh, what you feel of, about the show today. Hi viewers, my name is Fortune and I'm very glad to be in the kitchen today with Chef Andy. Mm -hmm. I really feel like this is more of a vegan meal, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. which is actually convenient to some of the people who don't, viewers, like, yeah. who yeah. don't, who don't eat beef exactly. and meaty stuff. Yes, just to add to that, we are going to be making a very, very simple and hearty vegetarian meal. I'm going to, of course, introduce the ingredients, but before I do so, I will mention that we're going to be making some managu on the show. Now, managu is the local name that it is known by. It is a very indigenous kind of uh, addition to your pantry and also to your ve uh, vegetable variety at home. You can, of course, be able to buy this locally. I think you managed to see some managu yes. in a market yes, before. Yes, yes. Now, also a story I can share about managu. Uh, a lot of a lot of people or city dwellers may not actually be very aware that it actually carries some very very good nutritional values. It's also a very very good addition to your meal and also gives a very good substitute to any ingredient such as spinach or even kale. But before we continue, I will of course introduce the ingredients just to give you an idea of what to expect for the show. Now, from the very front, you will require one stock cube beef or chicken you're also going to require some garlic cloves and one peeled onion you'll also require some uh, ripe tomatoes a bit of some salt and a bit of some stock powder you're also going to require some coriander leaves some managu of course in its rawest of forms you'll also require some maize flour which will be turning into a very simple ugali some water to aid in cooking your ugali and last but not least some olive oil which is a healthier alternative to vegetable oil but before we begin, we'll of course give you this chance to freshen up and we'll catch you after a very, very short time. Welcome back viewers, if you're just tuning in, I've just been introducing the guest of today who is Fortune. She's an actress and a very, very big upcoming talent, so you better make sure to watch out in your screens very, very soon. Now, as I introduced the ingredients, as I introduced the ingredients earlier, for, the, for those of you who missed out, remember you can always be able to recap on this through our YouTube channel, that's Brand Plus TV Kenya. And you can also recap on many other episodes and beautiful recipes that you can be able to try in your very own home kitchen. But to start us off, we're going to begin by heating up a pan. Okay. Uh -huh. And now we're going to start this process very simply by building the base for our sauce. Uh -huh. Okay. Perfect. So we're going to be working on managu, as I mentioned, as I, as I also wanted to add, it's also a very indigenous kind of uh, ingredient. Not many of us are pretty much accustomed to using it, but you can of course be able to find it at very, very many of your retail markets. And remember, you can also be able to find this pretty much in most organic markets within the city. So we're Do we have another name for managu? Actually, for the, for the extent that I've known Managu, it doesn't really have another alternative, but I do know of different varieties of it. Uh -huh. As for instance, uh, the Congolese use a much more different kind of Managu. It's a little thicker on the leaves, yeah. 
I've also seen a very different variation in Uganda, which of course had very, very narrow leaves and mm -hmm. the plant was actually much shorter in size. Mm -hmm. But for the local term that is known in Kenya, I pretty much know it as just manaro. Sounds like it's an African thing. It's a very, very African thing, okay. yes. Okay. All right, so we'll begin by adding some oil to our pan. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Right. So we're going to start off this very simple process fortune by of course building our sauce okay. and we're going to start off by chopping a red onion mm -hmm. so i'm also going to show you a very simple tip on chopping an onion okay so very simply always begin by just slicing lengthways right over the top like that mm -hmm. and you can slice it almost all the way to the end but not get all the way to the side mm -hmm. and very very simply just let your knife Proceed to do that for you. Wow. Nice and easy, yeah? It looks and as you so can easy. see, it makes it so much easier to remove your core. Yeah. Alternatively, you can use your knife to just cut almost a triangle at the end and remove the core to begin with. Mm -hmm. Proceed to do the same thing by slicing through the top. Slice a little bit through the side. And finish off by chopping that fine so we're going to start off this process just by building up our sauce or rather the base for the for the managu okay so onto a nice smoking hot pan we'll add our onions right so we can reduce the heat slightly okay right so What's the advantage the of cooking in olive oil? Now one beautiful thing with cooking with olive oil is the fact that it's actually very low in cholesterol. Because it is associated with the high-end people. Well, it's, I would say it's not really the association with the high-end people. It's uh, more, of an, uh, more of an expense factor. Yeah. So you will find that uh, most, most households are preferably using all, uh, vegetable oil because it's easy to find and it's affordable. Which is still okay. Which is still okay. Okay. But what happens is when you actually go out into the market and you look around, you may actually not find olive oil in all your stores because it's actually a very... Uh, very very expensive commodity to use in the kitchen now as I also as I also wanted to add uh, mm -hmm. you can of course be able to find olive oil in most retail stores around the city but of course on the outskirts of Nairobi it may actually be a little hard to find mm -hmm. so I would say if you can get yourself on a, if you can get yourself one big bottle and keep it at home mm -hmm. if of course you're not close to the market yeah it's also always very handy because honestly food cooked in Olive oil is usually uh -huh. tasty, very, very, very tasty. tasty. Yes. Now to the onions, as soon as they turn brown, we are going to add just a little bit of oil. Mm -hmm. And this is basically to allow for the onion to oil. really lose water. its pungency. Yes, okay. just regular water. Mm -hmm. And to that we are going to be adding a bit of garlic. So I'll begin by mincing some garlic in my pesto. Why did you put salt in there? Now what happens is salt makes it much easier for you to turn it into a paste. Okay. So what happens is, once you begin by pounding down your garlic, mm -hmm. once you're done with that, all you need to do is just work your pestle right around the sides, okay. and it'll just basically turn your garlic okay. into a mince much faster. So also very important to mention, if you're going to be using that same technique of mincing garlic, be sure to always remember that you added your salt in a little earlier. And this is basically why you have a bit of water in the pan, just to be able to dissolve this salt and cook it down a little further. It becomes a paste. Yeah, so it basically turns into a paste and it makes it much easier than pounding. Okay. Right, so once that's done, we're going to proceed to add that into our pan. I'm just going to get rid of that. Right, so in goes our garlic, and at this stage I'll mention that this is basically our aromatic. Yeah. It's basically one of the ingredients you use to really give aroma and flavor to your dish. Okay. That's a, that's, I think that's the main reason why we're using it, because usually at home uh -huh. we don't cook managu using garlic. Exactly. Now, another tip I could share about using garlic as well, uh -huh. it really does and plays a very, very good part in breaking down the bitterness from your managu. Okay. And makes it a little more palatable and much easier to enjoy. Yeah. Right, so once that's done, we're going to also chop our tomatoes. Now I'm also going to share another tip with you on uh, cleaning out your tomato. Very keen on that. So very simply using the 
tip of your knife, proceed by removing the core, okay. and that makes it easier than having to incorporate it into your food. And once that's done, we're just going to slice that into wedges, mm -hmm. and I'm also going to deseed the tomato. Okay. Right, so very, very simple. Proceed to take out your core. I'm hoping we are not wasting any part of the tomato though. No, what happens is if you actually have some of the remaining bits from your tomatoes, like the ones we just removed, yeah. you can of course always uh, take time and even throw them maybe into a pot that you're making a soup or a sauce. Mm -hmm. And it will actually add a nice beautiful wateriness to it and it makes a very good substitute for water. Right, so just going to finish deseeding our tomato. Now, I also want to find out, Fortune, how, yes. how often do you have greens at home for dinner? Well, I feel like in every part of a meal, uh -huh. we usually have them like a meal, not breakfast, of course. I'm uh -huh. talking about lunch, I'm uh -huh. talking about dinner. Uh -huh. We usually have greens. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, do you know that greens are very vital, especially for your organs? in what that they actually do a very very good part in detoxing your body uh -huh. they also carry a very very good amount of vitamins in them uh -huh. and it also makes it very very hard for you to get sick especially if you're accustomed to eating greens wow so it's very very handy especially if you're having any particular meals at home uh -huh. always be sure to incorporate any kind of greens that you can find in the market uh -huh. this, they're actually very very good for you they do very, very many beautiful roles, especially like for people who are battling with uh, sugar and diabetes. Uh -huh. It actually helps to control their sugar level. Wow. Yes. I think that is something I'm going to tell my friends because they think uh, having veggies in every meal is uh -huh. a vegan thing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now, also another thing that you can also mention to them is, remember, vegan is also a very different style of eating. Mm -hmm. And it's not so similar to a vegetarian option. As you know, vegans do have a very, very different policy to eating in that they do actually believe in vegetables that were not um, uprooted from the ground. Mm -hmm. They believe in eating particular vegetables that fall from the tree. Oh. Yeah? I thought I and meant fruits vegetarian. As well. Yes, I think you meant vegetarians yeah. by that. But very important also for vegetarians out there. Uh -huh. Greens are very, very vital and they actually carry much more, uh, much more vitamin and nutrient content than most of any other vegetables that you can find out there. Wow. I, I believe I am learning a lot. I be viewers, you're still with us, right? Right. Now, in goes our last bit of tomatoes. So we're basically just going to continue to fry those and allow wow. them to continue to break up. But as we continue to prepare our dish... What will happen with that other bit of it? Or so what happens is we can, be, we can actually be able to puree this and add it to a sauce that you're making in the future. Okay. But because I don't want to incorporate it into our managu mm -hmm. dish, I'm just going to reserve it. Okay. And we can of course be able to add it into a dish that we'll make in the future. So, and it, it has a very nice aroma. Very good aroma, yeah? Yes. Right now, next up, I will of course also show you how to work with managu. Uh -huh. So I'm just going to grab these two bowls. This is just of course to aid me in cleaning this a little faster. Now something also to mention, remember the stalks for this particular vegetables are not used for the recipe. Yes. So we're only going to be using the leaves. Because I can imagine how much bitter they are. Yeah, it will actually, make, it'll actually become very, very bitter. Yeah. So very simply, we're going to begin by just pinching off those leaves from our managu stock and I'm just going to in leave case, those on the side. In case one of these flowers falls into our bowl, uh -huh. is it a problem? Yes, you, sh you should actually remove them because they do actually contain seeds in them. Mm -hmm. And what will happen is if you actually don't take time in removing those, they will actually add a graininess to your meal. Mm -hmm. Kind of what you feel, especially if you have a meal and maybe there's a bit of sand that fell into the oh, meal. Yeah. So what happens is you can actually bite into them and they make them very, very unpleasant easy, and it's very, very disturbing. Yeah. Right, so as I continue to pull the leaves out of our managu, I will of course mention it is a very, very simple process of preparing this. You'll of course begin by washing this under some running water. Mm -hmm. Very important to do so to make sure you don't have any bits of soil. Mm -hmm. And all you need to do once you take the leaves out, as I'm doing, 
You're only going to just boil it for about 20 minutes, cool it under some running water, and you can of course continue to fry it in with your onions and your tomatoes. Do they necessarily have to be fresh or can I buy them from the market and keep them in my fridge? Now, one particular thing I've realized, especially in the city, uh, which is of course things that are the trends that are changing now, mm -hmm. you can actually be able to find uh, pre-cooked uh, managu leaves that have actually just been blanched and frozen. So you can actually check out maybe even in your supermarkets near you, especially in the frozen section, you can of course be able to find managu that of course has been boiled and mm -hmm. packed, which of course makes it also easier to cook. So it actually it is healthy. Is, now I would, have, I would always recommend to cook it fresh. Uh -huh. So making it fresh of course makes sure that you don't actually lose out on nutrients. Yeah. And of course if there's any particular bacteria or uh, bits of cleanliness that did not go into the preparation, uh -huh. you actually make sure that that doesn't carry on into your food. Okay. So but, if I get them uh -huh. from the market, yeah, uh -huh. would you prefer I store them raw or I first boil them? I would recommend boiling them. Uh -huh allow them to cool off completely mm -hmm. and you can be able to pack those in your refrigerator or your freezer mm -hmm. and you can just defrost them chop them up when you need to cook your meal mm -hmm. and it'll actually save you much more time especially for some of you who are pretty much maybe rushing home or you're quite in a hurry to uh, make your dinner yeah. you can actually be able to boil this even in the morning allow them to cool off and proceed to cook them much later but because we've of course had a bit of time to prepare some of the managu that we have, yeah. you can of course bring out some of the one that's already parboiled in the fridge. And I'm just going to allow this to sit at the back. You can also have a pack like this from home, yeah? Exactly. So with managu, you can of course be able to store this in your refrigerator if you're going to use it on the same day. Uh -huh. Or you can freeze it and use it later on if you're going to of course use it or keep it for more than one or two days. Okay. So it's actually something that you can save time, boil in advance. Because then again, you remember one particular issue that most home viewers may actually experience is you may actually buy them fresh and keep them in your fridge, but what happens, spoil. they'll begin to turn dark. Yeah. And then they're not actually able to be cooked. Yeah. So this, of course, will always save you the pressures of actually rushing through your managu before it actually goes bad. So, Andy, uh -huh. uh, upon maybe someone who doesn't have a fridge in their house, uh -huh. is there any other way they can be able to store them and use them fresh later? Well, there's only the option of cooking them fresh, mm -hmm. because then again, being that it's also a perishable product, yeah. you can't actually be able to keep this for too long. So I'll always recommend if you don't have a refrigerator to store this, probably buy it in the same day, blanch it, cook it immediately, yeah. and then you can proceed to serve. Okay. Yeah. Right, so uh, viewers, for some of you who are just tuning in, this is pretty much the same managu that we had, but we did have some time to, of course, boil this a little bit earlier. And now basically once that's uh, taken out, you can just pretty much proceed to chop that with a knife. Remember, it is not frozen. And it is not frozen. Yes. This has only been kept in the refrigerator for a few hours. And all you need to do now is just proceed to chop that very, very finely. So I always recommend probably once you chop through the first, uh, the first round, mm -hmm. proceed to just chop that a little further. And this is just to make sure that you don't actually have any leaves sticking out of your mixture. Okay. So very simply, proceed to chop that nice and fine. Getting cranky. All right. So basically, once you've got most of your liquid cooked off, mm -hmm. you can proceed to add your managu to your pan. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, it's a very, very simple alternative, just as uh, simple as working with spinach or kale. Yeah. It's also much easier to clean. And of course, it will also save you the cost for the fact that it's actually not a high demand commodity. Yeah. And it actually costs much less. Right, so really once your nice. managu is mixed in into your onion and tomato mixture, mm -hmm. just proceed to add just a little bit of oil, a uh, bit of water. A little. A little. So I normally insist on adding just enough water to be able to cover the, cover, uh, the mixture right up to the surface. Mm -hmm. And you can pretty much allow that to continue simmering, allow your tomatoes to continue to break down. 
then you will of course uh, proceed to add the rest of your seasoning which of course we will start by adding just a little bit of our stock powder. Okay. So you can add one whole teaspoon of that to your mixture. Uh -huh. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. And you can also throw in one stock cube. So as I also mentioned, it doesn't really make a difference if you're using uh, the beef stock cube or the chicken stock cube. Mm -hmm. Any particular one that you can be able to find at home should actually do you justice. And uh, maybe someone at home is asking, uh -huh. they don't like spices. Well, they if you do don't like spices to this, you can easily proceed to season maybe with just a bit of salt. If you're also going to be cooking this meal for people who have got maybe ailments or they're recovering and they probably under medication. Yeah. I will also recommend don't proceed to add any spices to it, just a little bit of seasoning, uh, a bit of salt and pepper will actually give you also a very, very good taste in Managu. Okay. So we leave it until it uh, brings itself to a boil, right? Exactly. So okay. we're actually just going to allow that to continue cooking, mm -hmm. allow for the vegetable to also really incorporate with the flavors mm -hmm. and we're going to allow that to cook for anywhere between 5 to 10 minutes and it can come off the heat immediately. Despite in it being parboiled, right? Despite it being parboiled. But okay. remember, we have of course saved quite a bit of time by using pre-boiled managu. If you're going to be using it from scratch, you may actually want to create a bit more time to allow you to boil it, cool it off, and proceed to cook as you would uh, for the same dish. But we are of course also going to be doing our ugali, but before I do so, we are going to take a very, very quick break and when we do come back, I will also be showing Fortune how to make a very, very simple ugali and we are going to proceed to the last little bit of serving and sharing with you some serving suggestions. So please don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. Welcome back viewers, if you're just tuning in, our first part of the dish is pretty much done. Now as we continue to finish off, I will of course begin by making that simple ugali that will be an accompaniment to this very simple managu. And I will of course allow for Fortune to proceed to plate this, so you can our proceed. Our managu is ready. Perfect. Right, so as she does that, I'm just going to come to the side here, where we already have a pot that's already boiling with some water. And it's a very, very simple process of making ugali. All you need is a tub of water and a bit of your maize flour. So I'm just going to begin to add my flour into the water. Of course, giving it a mix, making sure that you don't have any particular lumps before you proceed to cooking off your ugali to the very end. Of course, giving me just a bit of time to interact with Fortune and ask her if she could give us maybe some pointers on acting, how she stumbled upon this, uh, this career uh, and what you've learned through the period that you've been an actor. Well, uh -huh. uh, acting for me being a passion, not what I went to school to do. Uh -huh. I went to school to do marketing, yeah? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But I feel like I'm comfortable in com incorporating what I do as a profession and uh -huh. what I do as a passion because uh -huh. now as an actress in as much as I'm a marketer uh -huh. I can be able to market you things via acting of course you know all women are actresses you exactly. just happen to be wise enough to get paid <laughs> for it so yeah but then again I also it also brings me to ask is being camera ready natural or do you have to go through a bit of training to be the actor that becomes the actor the, or the actress that becomes the actress at the end um well i was born camera ready okay, that is okay. something i'll say for myself i used to love photos even as a small baby uh -huh. back in the day yeah uh -huh. so i don't really know 
whether it's something people get schooled uh -huh. to do uh -huh. yeah but uh -huh. it's very natural okay. okay you just act like you're talking to someone else uh -huh. and then yeah the camera's got it okay yeah what are the challenges that you may have experienced as an as an actress through your four years of uh, of being on camera impersonating characters uh -huh. that is very hard trust me because uh, at times you might happen to be a very bubbly person okay and you're this sweet girl uh -huh. and then you're given a script to her but you're supposed to be a bitter woman a bitter uh -huh. married woman uh -huh. for that fact yeah uh -huh. so having to get into character get into terms with what the, the directors expect uh -huh. what the script uh -huh. says uh -huh. is not easy uh -huh. but well uh -huh. it's a uh, it's worth taking the risk Okay, okay. Yes. And would you have maybe some pointers towards maybe people out there who are maybe considering acting as a profession in their future? Yes. Uh -huh. Acting is something natural that okay. comes from within. Okay. Yeah? It's just the, the way you would want to look harsh to a kid, the uh -huh. next minute you want to look sweet to a kid. Uh -huh. So to all of you young people out there, uh -huh. old people too, uh -huh. acting is not a hard thing to do. It does have its own challenges, mm -hmm, yes, mm -hmm. but um, to all of you who are looking to be actresses and actors in the future, mm -hmm. press on to it. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, it's not, an, it's not a hard thing to do. It's mm -hmm. the same way you're a chef, yeah? Okay. You're there to cook as a profession, okay. but you're doing it because you love it. Exactly. So if you love acting, why not act? Uh -huh. Yeah. It's and just a it, consistency. Is it for just any age? Would you, yes, would anybody. Would you say there is a right age to begin acting? Or is it too late for the old that are maybe tuned into the show today? Unless they didn't know Mze Ojuang. Okay, actually, <laughs> yeah, that was a classic yes, from back yes. in the day. Yes. So for the small kids, uh -huh. I feel like it's... Uh, even better for them, uh -huh. they, ha they stand a higher chance uh -huh. of uh, making a living out of it. Because okay. if you start nurturing something, you know, it's all about consistency. Uh -huh. Even being a chef, mm -hmm. you can't be a chef today, tomorrow be a driver. You have to be consistent in what you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for those ones out there who are actors, born mm -hmm. actors, uh -huh. trained actors, uh -huh. it's just basically consistency. Do it every day. It's what you love. Make it what you love. Make it your passion. Uh -huh. If it's not, uh -huh. if it is, then be consistent in it. I'm also curious to ask, what are some of the, the funniest moments that you've had on TV? I'm sure there's something that you probably maybe did, maybe this or last year, that pretty much brought a laughter to you that was different from any other particular shoots or episodes or any particular roles that you played on TV. Okay, but we are not talking about embarrassing moments. Right. Okay. So are we maybe talking about that? You could actually share those maybe if it's uh, appropriate for our listeners. Maybe you can give them maybe a little touch of maybe the extremes of acting. Okay, since we are uh -huh. in the kitchen, let uh -huh. me talk about something in line of the kitchen. So, okay. one day I was on set okay. and I was... Um, me and restaurants, we have a thing. Uh -huh. If you tell me I act about food or uh -huh. in a restaurant to order, uh -huh. I know how to order. But paying bills, yo, <laughs> you all know how that goes, yeah? Uh -huh. So I was in a restaurant. Okay. And chicken apparently happens to be one of my favorite meals. Okay. Yeah, so I ordered chicken. Uh -huh. And the waitress felt like it was good enough for her to bring uh -huh. me a drumstick. Uh -huh. Back then, I did not know how to use the fork and knife. Uh -huh. So that I really, really became quite disastrous. Yeah? I really embarrassed myself. <laughs> I really caused a scene uh -huh, in a uh -huh. restaurant whereby everybody who was around me uh -huh. burst into laughs. You know, uh -huh. when you're trying to get the meat from the drumstick and uh -huh. then poof. Yeah, the prettiest girl, you know, the like place. the prettiest girl, the one who's got the attention cameras on you. Uh -huh. Everybody's waiting and watching to see how good this goes. And uh -huh. then all of a sudden everything is flying everywhere. I, out of control okay, and an it was well uh -huh, uh -huh. it was embarrassing uh -huh. but at the same time uh -huh. it was a good lesson please and do what you're good at <laughs> and then maybe you can also share with us um some of the things you've learned through through acting is there something that probably maybe impacted your character or maybe brought a, a, a deal uh, maybe something new out of yourself that you did not know about yourself before that yes uh-huh um, for me, as I've said earlier, uh -huh. acting was a passion. Like okay. back in the day since when I was a baby, uh -huh. growing up and uh -huh. all. So for me, I never used to think I'm inspiring someone else. Uh -huh. So when it got to a point where people are looking up to me like, Hi, I love your acting. And I'm like, 
what we all need to do is do what we love and uh -huh. people will love us for that uh -huh. yeah uh -huh. it's like you mm -hmm. you're here as a chef yeah. right yeah. it's what you do on the daily yeah both as work both uh -huh. as fun both mm -hmm. as everything yeah uh -huh. Uh -huh. but now moving on mm -hmm. moving on like growing up uh -huh. to where i've gotten to mm -hmm. i feel like so many people feel inspired by what i do yet okay. it's a passion uh -huh. and that person who feels inspired by me because uh -huh. of what i do uh -huh. this is what they do too and uh -huh. it inspires someone who's around, who's them. around them yes okay so okay. that is what i've grown to learn uh -huh. so doing what you love to earn a living from it i mean make your passion your paycheck mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that is what i'll say that is what That's i've learned very, very over the years lesson to the viewers so for some of you who are of course looking at uh, acting or being on TV or being on camera as a career, I believe Fortune has done just what I expected her to do, which was exactly what she did. And she actually managed to deliver it very, very simply. So as she has said, it's all about passion and it's all about loving what you do. Consistency. And what, what did you share with some of those who are camera shy? Because I was also camera shy when I started the cooking show. I um, wasn't actually a fan of cooking on camera, but uh -huh. I found it very natural to do it without cameras around me. Okay. How, how did you battle that, if um, it was a challenge, that is? I think uh -huh. we are in 2019, uh -huh. yeah? Uh -huh. And everybody has a phone that has a camera around uh -huh. them. Uh -huh. If not with you, around uh -huh. you. Even for the young people, because uh -huh. I believe you're also uh -huh. watching, yeah? Uh -huh. Just grab your mom's phone, uh -huh. grab your dad's phone, look at it. No, let me make this simple for uh -huh. you. Use a mirror. Mm -hmm. Every time you stand in front of a mirror, just imagine that is a camera. Uh -huh. Yeah? And, that's and that way you, works. you stop being camera shy. Oh, you're just okay, walking past okay. the mirror and you're like, oh, you uh -huh. guys are a camera. So we can now talk. Uh -huh. yeah. Right. I believe Fortune has pretty much delivered it very well. And for those of you, of course, thinking of acting, who, uh, which method would you advise them maybe to begin? Is there a, a casting that you go to mm. or are you sourced on, on particularly for yourself? Well, uh -huh. for those who are coming up right now, uh -huh. there are so many platforms. Uh -huh. When I talk about platforms, I'm talking about the social media platforms. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. do, what you, do what you love doing, be consistent on it and somebody somewhere is watching. Mm -hmm. That's what I'll tell you. Just on your Facebook pages, on your Instagram, on your snapchat just imagine you're acting mm -hmm. imagine yourself on that stage you see yourself mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and uh, as you continue progressing doing that every day mm -hmm. somebody's gonna locate you so many people are being located on social media platforms okay yeah because okay. i believe back in the day when you go to the theater queue for hours for mm -hmm. auditions and mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. now things are easy people mm -hmm. are doing it from home so you can actually just uh, upload a video of yourself yes. trying out this Do and Do not compete with those with big numbers. They uh -huh. also started somewhere. Okay. That's what I'll say. So the best advice you can give them is start somewhere. Start, start on your somewhere. mirror at home Somebody and work your way somewhere through that. is watching you. Very, very beautiful and handy tips for some of you watching. So if you are looking at being an actor, you've basically, or an actress rather, you basically managed to hear it from Fortune. And I believe she has pretty much made it a little bit of an interest even for myself. Do you think I can be an actor? Yes. Well, I might as well you try. You act up so sometimes, I might, I right? Can just act up you sometimes, act up yeah? sometimes, yeah? so that yeah? can be acting too. It, it's not it can be, uh -huh. it is acting okay, too. Okay. Yeah. So right. do what you love doing and be consistent. Awesome advice from Fortune. Now, Fortune, as we finish off our gully, uh -huh. I'm of course going to also share with you a very, very handy tip especially when plating, okay. a little different from uh, serving that big lump on your plate that uh, doesn't make sense you, at you times. You just assume they take a big lump of ugali. It's, it's, it's well, okay. It's, 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 well, I believe for some of us out there, we, we do, of course, know people who really like their portions big. But I'm also like going big. to show you, exactly, <laughs> but I'm also going to show you a small tip on managing to portion out that ugali, especially maybe you're making it for kids okay. or someone that's ill. Okay. You may actually want to really stick with the nutritionist's guidelines. Yes. So I'm actually going to show you through using this and mm -hmm. a bit of uh, cling film, mm -hmm. a very, very simple way of portioning out your ugali. Okay. So very simply, we'll begin by grabbing a bit of cling film. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to do is, once I have my size all measured out, mm -hmm. we're just basically going to spread that on the inside. What if I do not have a king film? 
Uh, you can actually be able to use maybe a bit of some melted butter or even a bit of some cooking oil. Okay. You can also wrap that That's inside nice. this small container. Okay. And you can actually be able to achieve the same with any particular bowl of whichever size. Okay. You, uh, on occasion, you can actually even rub a bit of water inside it mm -hmm. just to make sure it's moist enough. Yeah. And it will actually be able to come out very simply. Okay. All right. So once you've got a bit of your film right on the inside, mm -hmm. it's a very, very simple technique. We're going to proceed to just scoop out our ugali, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to press that into the mold. And all you're going to do now is proceed to do the same right up till you get to the very top. Okay. But very important to always work your way around, making sure that you actually cover as much as you can inside there. Okay. So this we managed to cook about a cup and a half to two cups of maize flour. Yeah. And you should actually be able to pull that off very, very easily with a bowl this size. So I'm just going to go right around it again. Of course, I'm taking time to press around as I go. So that it can be So that it can shape. really get that beautiful shape. Yeah. And of course, once that's done, we're pretty much going to proceed on to the plating. So I'm just going to ask you to pull the plate from the side there. Okay. Right, simple as that. So I'll of course begin by turning over our gully onto the plate. Mm -hmm. And you can be able to just give it a few seconds just to set and uh, compose itself in the mold. Okay. And once that's done, it only needs you to lift very, very simply. And your gully comes out nicely portioned out. And it also gives you a plate. It has this crunch that looks like and it's, it's got a that tribal bit of crunch yeah. that's right at the top. Okay. Right, and simply you can proceed to add your managu right on the do side. Do I pour it or do I? You just... can do whichever you prefer. No, I believe this. Looks you believe better. that's easier? Yeah. All right. So simple as that. Uh, remember, very important to always remember as well when you're serving a meal. Mm -hmm. Remember, sometimes you could actually have a guest who may not, of course, manage to finish a particular portion that you serve. Yes. So even using particular bowls such as this mm -hmm. also aids you in making sure that you can actually maybe share the dish maybe around two or three guests that you have. Okay. As, of, as opposed to just pouring everything onto the plate. Okay. So for instance, you can actually portion out your girl into four or five portions. Mm -hmm and maybe have a nice big bowl of managu to pass around the room. Yeah. And of course, this always encourages, especially for those of you who like to eat on a dinner table, it actually encourages a bit of sharing and it brings about a bit of harmony and conversating. Okay. So it's actually also a very good tip to engage people in conversation. Wow. Yeah. On a family basis, like On a family table. basis, exactly. Okay. Perfect. Now, we have, of course, come to the very end of the show. I will, of course... Thank you once again for tuning in this far. Remember, if you missed out, we do have our Facebook channel, that's Brand Plus TV Kenya, where you can be able to recap on this and many other different particular dishes that you can incorporate in your own home kitchen. But Fortune, I think we pretty much have managed to convince you that Managu is pretty much a good option to go with. The way it looks so tasty. I wouldn't even imagine it's the managu I used to cry as a baby. Maybe you can actually give us a taste. <laughs> I and, used to uh, cry as a baby when my mom told me we are uh -huh. having managu tonight. Uh -huh. And I actually Let grew up, there. for some of you may not know, some of us that grew up maybe around the 90s or the 80s, some of us would actually uh, get punishment, you know, this it actually used to be in a form of punishment. To eat managu? No, 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 we'd actually be sent into the shrubs and you'd have to go and pick out managu. Wow. And one particular memory I remember was I would of course always go out there and I would actually pluck weeds and managu together. So that you bring a huge... So that I, I would actually expect it to be a reward when I come back because my batch was bigger, but uh -huh. unfortunately they You're would not. actually end up all weeds. But the 90s course, kids, you know you won't understand this, but... Yeah, if you grew up in the 90s and you pretty much lived maybe right around the, 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 around the farm areas or just outside town, that it actually used to be a very, very... Um, it, it actually used to be a very interactive way of uh, killing some free time in the afternoon. Okay. Because as I, as I recall, my mother did not particularly have a fridge or tools like we have today to okay. be able to make this in advance. Yeah. So it actually used to be an activity we would do in the afternoons. Wow. Yeah, but do give it a taste. Maybe give us your rating between one and five. How is it? Is it bitter? Is it tasty? A, is it salty? It's a 4.9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
I wouldn't put it at a five because uh-huh. of course you guys won't believe me, taste. but try this menu mm-hmm. at home and you will give it a five. It's really tasty. So ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. We've of course taken a t- uh, time and privilege to prepare this very simple dish. So I do hope some of you will actually take time and try it at home. But remember, if you do have any questions or any particular issues that you may want to be clarified pertaining to this very simple dish, remember you can always write back to us through our Facebook page, that's Brand Plus TV Kenya, and we're always more than happy to hear back from you. But from studios, we will bid you farewell for this show. And until the next episode, God bless you all. Bye-bye.